Hi everyone, welcome back to my math tutorial video. In the previous video, I covered how to do polynomial long division. Today, I'm going to cover inverse function. Here's my first question. Do all functions have their inverse version? The answer is not actually. A function has to satisfy a certain condition called one to one in order to have its inverse function. And the inverse notation given a function, let's say f of x1 equals y1 is, is f inverse. And this is negative one, it looks like a negative power, but actually it's not because this is on the uh, function here. It's not the exponent of a variable. Sometimes it might be confusing. So here we have f inverse of y1 equals x1. And if we plug in y1 equals f of x1, then we will have the third equation. So if we do f inverse of the original function, it will return to the variable itself, x1. And this is pretty much like the radical and the squared, right? Let's say we have a square root x. And now I do a square. Then the square will cancel out the square root, which gives me a x. So this is a similar concept. And this is and this square and the square root is pretty much like the inverse in f function. Okay. So now let's see the definition of 1 to 1. And what is 1 to 1? So no two elements in the domain of function f correspond to the same element in the range of function f. So in other words, each x in the domain has exactly one image in the range. And no y in the range is the image of more than one x in the domain, which means x1 is the only solution of a function y1 that's so called one to one so the one x corresponds to only one y and vice versa so now let's see the properties of a one to one function so the first property is the domain of f equals the range of f inverse and the range of f equals the domain of f inverse. So this is so this one means that for the function original function f, we have x as our input and y as our output. So x is my domain and the y is the range. However, in the inverse function, it's going to be the opposite. So y is my input. And x is the output. So that's the reason why we will have the domain equals the range. The range is the output. And the domain is the input. And the same thing here, the range of the f function, which is y, should be equal to the domain of f inverse, which is the y. So y matches y, x matches with x. And second, so this is the equation that I mentioned before. So I have f inverse of f is equal to x for every x in the domain of f. And it's going to be the same. If we change the spot, we do the original function first of f inverse and it will give you the same answer which is x and for every x in the domain of f inverse so both equation valid in the domain of both f and also the f inverse and the last property is the graph of a function and the graph of its inverse are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. 
So the y equals x is like a 45 degree linear line. So here, let's say if I have a function f of x, and this line y equals x is like a mirror, and the f inverse will be the reflection of my original f of x. So now I want to share a typical example of one-to-one -one functions. Suppose we have two functions. One is x to the third, and the other one is x to the one-third. And x to the one-third is actually an inverse function of x to the third. And let's see if those two one-to-one -one functions have the, those three properties. So the first property is the domain of f matches with the range of f inverse, the vice versa. And also the range of f should be equal to the domain of f inverse. So now let's check the plot. So the blue curve is x to the power of 3. And the orange curve is x to the 1 third. So now let's see the domain of f. So if I pick an interval 0 to 0.5 here, so the corresponding y is going to be here. It looks like 0.15. Since f2 is the inverse function of f1, so its input is going to be the output of the original function, which is f1. So let's say here our input would be 0 to 0.15. So let's see the orange curve here. We find the 0.15 here. And then we can do the vertical line here. And then we go to the y axis. So this is exactly the same. So 0 to 0.5. So now the range matches with the domain here. And this range is actually the domain of f2. So we can say, so this statement is valid. And the second is we use those two equations. f inverse of f of x, in this case would be x to third to the one third. And then we cross this out. And then it gives us an x. And same thing here, f of f inverse of x, we have x to the one third to the third power, right? And those two canceled out, right? So it's also x. So those two valid as well. And the last one is they are symmetric with respect to y equals x. And here's the y equals x. And this dashed line here, it's like a mirror, right? And this is like reflection. And they do look symmetric. This is a very typical example. Here's my second question. How do we tell if the function is one-to-one? -one? We can use a test called horizontal line test. So if no horizontal line intersects the graph of the function f in more than one point, then the function is one-to-one, -one, which means if I randomly draw a horizontal line, so if the function is one-to-one, -one, then it will intersect with the horizontal line at only one point. So we will only have one intersection here. If the intersection is more than one, then it's not going to be a one-to-one -one function. So here I have two functions. One is x squared, which is green, and the blue one is x to the third. So now let's see how many intersections they have with the horizontal line. So for x to the third, there's only one intersection, which is right here. And given the domain, negative infinity to infinity. And the second function have two intersections with the horizontal line, given the domain negative infinity to infinity as well. So we can see two intersections, one is here. 
the other one is at the other side, this negative side here. So now we can give the conclusion that x to the third is 1 to 1, x squared is not 1 to 1 function. So here's my third question. So can the x squared also be a 1 to 1 function if we define a certain domain? The answer is yes. So if we define the domain that x is from 0 to infinity, or if x is positive, then x squared can also be 1 to 1 because we only observe one intersection. So if a function is not 1 to 1, it doesn't mean it cannot be 1 to 1 given a certain domain. As long as there's only one intersection between the function and a horizontal line, then the function is 1 to 1 given the certain domain. So I think we have a good understanding of what a 1 to 1 function is and how we test it. So now we can move on to solve the inverse. We can solve the inverse using algebra. There are three steps to solve the inverse. First one is we put y for f of x. And the second step, we're using algebra to solve for x and we find x as a function of y. And the last step is we replace x by f inverse of y. And the last thing I need to mention is and don't forget to double check the domain and range of both inverse function and then the original function since they should have um, the same property of a one-to-one -one function, right? Okay, so now let's do an example to help us understand the process. So here I have 2x plus 3. So the first step is we put y for f of x, right? And then the second step is we solve for x. We find out x as a function of y. So here we just do algebra stuff. And now we divide this by 2. So we have x here. So here is the equation, x as a function of y. So x equals y minus 3 over 2. The last step is we put f inverse of y is equal to y minus 3 over 2. And here the domain I would say is every real number and the y is also the real numbers. So same thing here, domain is real numbers and my range, which is x here, is also all real numbers, right? So those two match with those two. Perfect. And now example two, I'm going to have a quadratic function. Here is x squared. And we know that this is not a one-to-one -one function. And how do we find the inverse? I believe for most of the problems, they will provide a certain domain for you to solve this problem. So now I will just say x is positive, right? So here I have x is zero to infinity. And my y, which is f of x, to the range, we can plug this in. So if it's zero, then we're going to have a three. And if it's infinity, we have an infinity. And now the first step is we put y for f of x. So we have y two x squared plus three. And we solve for x. So this is y minus three also. And then we have divided by two equals x squared. And then we take the square root. 
However, we don't need to give the plus minus. We only need to give a positive since we already defined a domain that x is positive. So here, the square root here just positive. And this is square root of y minus 3 over 2. And this is my x. And I will have my x equals square root of y minus 3 over 2. And the last step is we put f inverse of y equals square root of y minus 3 over 2. And don't forget to give the domain range. So my y is from 3 to infinity. And my next here is, you know, square root of something. Shares are always positive. It's the same thing because we already defined the x positive. So those do have to match with each other, right? So now let's go to do our more complicated case. So example three, I'm going to have a logarithmic equation. So how do we do it? Again, this is x squared. So I have to give a certain domain for us to solve an inverse. So let's just say this is positive. So my x is zero to infinity. Okay, so the first step is we put y for f of x. So here we have a log of x squared plus 3. And now we try to solve for x. And here we can have y minus 3 equals 2 times log of x. It's from the log law, right? Okay, so then we divide that by 2. And we have a log of x. So here, I think I forgot to give the range of the original function. So the log of x, it looks like, let's see here, 0. It looks like that. Right, and this is my one, and oh, this is y, this is next. So we have negative infinity when x approaches to zero. And when x goes to positive infinity, then the y is just infinity. Okay, so now let's move on. So this is log of x, and the inverse of that is just exponent. It's 10 to the power of y minus 3 over 2. So here we have a 10 to the power of whatever on the left equals x. And here's the x equals 10 to the power of y minus 3 over 2. And then we re replace x by the f inverse of y. So we have f inverse of y equals 10 to the power of y minus 3 over 2. And the domain is all the real numbers. It's negative infinity to infinity. And here x, which is this function, f inverse of y. And x is always positive. This is the final answer. Okay, so now let's move on to the next example. So I'm going to have a different function. This time we are dealing with the trig function. Here we have f of x equals 2 sine plus 3. So sine is going to be a more complicated function, right? It's an oscillating function. Let's see, if we will only focus on the positive side, we will have a wave like that. So starting from zero, like that, up and down, up and down, and it goes on and on, right? And this point and this point, this point is going to be 2 pi, and this point is pi. 
So if we will only focus on the one-to-one -one part, then in general, we will only see, let's say from this peak to the bottom peak here, right? Let's say from here to here, it's going to be one-to-one -one for sure, because we can use, we can test it by using horizontal line test. It's only one intersection here. So in general, we have the domain for sine function to be one to one is from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. This is not the unique domain for sine function to be one to one. It's repeating, as we can see here. This three over two pi, and then this is you know this is repeating. And in general, we just put from um, negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And we're going to have the y, which is the range, is always between um, one and negative one. Okay, so then we can follow the same process here, y equals to sine of x plus three. And the inverse of sine is arc sine. So here arc sine of whatever on the left, so y minus three over two is equal to x. And here, let's rewrite this part. So this is going to be arc sine of y minus three over two. And finally, we put a inverse of y. A better way of writing arc sine is sine inverse is that. And then we can have the rest. And here, the input should match with the range of the original function. So this is our final answer. Okay, so that's all the examples that I want to share. And let's go to see a list of inverse of those common functions. So most of the time we see plus multiply and their inverse is minus divide. And there's no condition I want to mention. And the second case is for one over x. The inverse function is one over y. And we need to make sure that x and y are not zero. So we cannot include zero as, you know, a part of domain or range. Because we know one over zero does not exist. And here we have a, a power. So x to the n, its inverse is the radical the n, or we can say uh, y to the power of 1 over n. So in this case, sometimes we have um, n is odd number that is 1 to 1. We don't need to do anything about it. If n is even number, then we have to define the domain and either you know it's positive or negative and um, if n is negative then it's like you know the previous case because this is x to negative one so we, we're going to have one over something and so then we will add the previous case the previous condition with the current two conditions together if it's negative. Okay, and for this case exponential, we have e to the x and its inverse is natural log of y. For all those log functions, those input for log function is always positive. So my y has to be positive. And here's a more general case. This is a to the x. And we have a log based A of Y, and this Y is also positive. And also the little A 
is positive. And here's the trick sine function case. So one of the example that we did before is also sine. So we know that this is, you know, x should be negative pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. And the y is negative 1 to 1. And it doesn't have to be, you know, parentheses. It can also be bracket. Depends on how the problem gives to you. If the problem gives you um, the domain, you know, the bracket, then you're going to have the range here also bracket. And cosine is a little different. So the x should be from 0 to pi. And the y is the same. It's negative 1 to 1. And the last one is tangent. So the tangent is, you know, negative the same thing for um, the sine, so negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. For y is all the real numbers. In the end, I'm going to wrap up all the stuff that we learned today. So if a function is a one-to-one -one or is one-to-one -one within given domain, then it has an inverse function. And the domain of the original function is equal to the range of the inverse function. And we've learned about the three-step thing for solving an inverse. And the last thing that I mentioned is the list of inverse of common functions. And I hope you try your best to memorize that list and get familiar with the whole procedures. And I think that's pretty much for today. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.